COVID-19 continues to greatly impact the world. Newly discovered strains of the virus found in the UK and South Africa have forced countries to implement strict lockdowns and curfews, once again turning their streets into deserted ghost towns. But in China, strict measures have helped cities return to the bustling hubs they once were, with people free to travel without risk or concern. So how did they manage to do it? Every morning, I take the subway to go to work. And since the COVID-19 pandemic, this has led to some serious changes in how the subway operates. Upon entering the station, thermometers are being used to ensure everybody has a regular temperature. Attendants are also being extra vigilant to ensure that people are wearing their masks. If they haven't got one, then they're not going to be allowed entry. As well as checking masks and temperatures, Beijing Subway has implemented other control measures, such as running more trains on selected lines to help better manage passenger flow and increasing ventilation inside the stations. Disinfection of the station's public areas has also been prioritised, with all areas disinfected five times a day and parts frequently touched by passengers, such as turnstiles, escalator handles and elevator cabs, disinfected every hour. We're now outside the gates to my company, who have also introduced some stringent measures in light of the pandemic. Now, the first thing I need to do is get up my health code and show it to the security guard. If it's green, then I can go through to the hall. Now, once inside the hall, I need to get my temperature checked. If this is okay, then I can go on to my office. All good. From the onset of the pandemic, Health codes have been a vital part of the Chinese government's COVID-19 prevention methods, helping keep the public safe. By tracking people's routes, health officials have been able to quickly identify anyone who has interacted with a confirmed or suspected COVID-19 case, helping them to effectively trace infections and prevent any further spread of the virus. All companies, shopping malls, residential communities and subways in Beijing now require green health codes for entry, creating a valuable barrier between healthy people and the virus. There's been a few things that have been very impressive to me. One is the how the people all work together cohesively to try to follow the rules. I think uh, secondly was um, the uh, usage of new technologies to track and respond to outbreaks very quickly. As COVID-19 has been effectively dealt with here in China, household consumption has rebounded rapidly. Now I've come here to this Hubei restaurant to grab some lunch. It's got great ratings online, and I've also got some discount vouchers I can use that have been issued by the government and online platforms. Now this restaurant was closed last year because of the outbreak, and it only opened recently last June. I'm going to talk to the boss and see what business has been like since then, and also get something tasty to eat. Serving Hubei classics like spicy beef stew, warming lotus root soup and fragrant hot dry noodles, Ouye is these days packed with hungry customers, making the owner Mr Chen a very busy but happy man. But just over 12 months ago, things were very different. Uh,一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次一千次
and sophisticated test and trace schemes, businesses like Mr. Chen's are rebounding quickly and helping everyday lives return to a relative state of normality. The rollout of vaccines worldwide have however been deemed essential if the current pandemic is to finally end, allowing for the reopening of state economies and the resumption of international travel. Since the pandemic's outbreak, Chinese scientists and researchers have worked to develop and produce effective vaccines against COVID-19, cooperating with countries such as UAE and Brazil to test their efficiency. They sent protective equipment to Brazil, which uh, was very important. There were uh, many contacts between medical teams in China sharing their experiences with medical teams in Brazil. And more recently, what we have, which uh, is very important, is a cooperation in testing uh, a vaccine from one of the Chinese companies that is developing a vaccine. The vaccine will be uh, also uh, produced in Brazil, so it will be uh, uh, a major landmark in cooperation in this pandemic. As of the end of February, China has administered nearly 46 million doses of its coronavirus vaccine in the country. The National Health Commission of China has stated that all doses will be provided free of charge to the Chinese public, with health officials confident that it will have inoculated 40% of its population by the end of July this year. Since gaining market approval, China's self-made vaccine has been administered in selected cities across the country. I'm currently stood at one of the inoculation sites in Chaoyang District, Beijing, where people can come to receive their vaccine. And China made the best use of what China was able to do. I was really amazed because uh, the people, in, in my personal experience, what, what I witnessed, people were uh, uh, taken very good care of. So the whole problem was taken very, very seriously. And I think this happened in the whole country. And so um, the problem could be solved before it became a bigger problem. China's inactive vaccine is a safe, effective, accessible, and perhaps most importantly, affordable option for countries looking to end their COVID health. China has so far granted market approval to four domestically made COVID-19 vaccines. In recent months, countries and organizations from all four corners of the globe have purchased or been donated one of China's coronavirus vaccines, highlighting the active role the country is playing in aiding their personal coronavirus battles and bringing the world one step closer to ending the pandemic for good.